In today's video, I head into the forest to capture golden autumn colors and macro photos just like these. I brought my camera to the Hermitage, a woodland spot in Perthshire in Scotland that's renowned for its amazing trees, its incredible river and its all-round stunning views. It's mid-autumn and I knew that the incredible golden colours of the leaves would look stunning right now. But I also got lucky with the weather, with beautiful light overhead that cast down through the trees, giving everything a dreamy glow. At the start of my walk, I found these little mushrooms clinging to this stump. I inverted my camera and used focus bracketing to get my shot. Nearby, I found this little mushroom that I felt also deserved to be photographed. My route then brought me to the heart of the Hermitage, a truly stunning location with a roaring waterfall flanked by rocky outcrops and trees that look simply astounding in their golden foliage. I took a couple of quick shots from the bridge before moving around to find a better composition that includes Oshian's Hall. I tried a few different compositions here, wanting to incorporate some of the rocks I was on as foreground interest. My widest lens was 24mm though, which didn't feel quite wide enough, so I tried a vertical composition that incorporated this boulder and this overhead branch into the one scene. But I also tried doing a panorama taking nine images across the bottom, the middle and the top of the scene and then merging those into one wider image in Lightroom. I liked the result and it proved to be a great way of taking a wider angle shot than I thought I would otherwise be able to achieve. But it's this shot that's my favourite of this series. It's actually a single image taken at 24mm and I love the more focused composition that it's given. I used my Polar Pro ND filter to bring my shutter speed to around half a second, which is enough to give some blurry motion to the water rushing past, but still keeping plenty of detail. I love how it's created these ribbons of water flowing over the rocks and how it turns into a tumultuous cauldron as it cascades over the edge. Eventually, I moved on from the river, enjoying the trails through the woods and how the sunlight filtered through the trees and picked out the vibrant colors on the leaves. I found myself just snapping away when certain patches of light or colour caught my attention. And while none of the shots are especially stand out on their own, I love how together they really tell the story of this autumnal day. I also saw these rocks in the river that I felt lent themselves quite nicely to a photo, with the golden leaves above. Again, I used a slower shutter speed to blur the motion of the water around the rocks. I also cleaned up some stray branches in Photoshop and I'm really pleased with how this shot looks. But just as I was coming to the end of my autumn adventure, I came across some real standout mushrooms. I've come away from the waterfall into the woods and I found these absolutely amazing mushrooms. What I particularly like is that they are uh, just under this, uh, this uh, fir tree. We've got um, loads of the needles that's littering the ground, we've got fir cones and actually I'm able to kind of shoot from slightly below. What I particularly like about this scene as well is not only we've got the two mushrooms uh, that are kind of the subjects, the larger one and the smaller one, but there's this third just behind them that's a bit more eaten away and dropped over and I really like that. I think it kind of shows this lovely context of sort of the life and death, the life cycle of these mushrooms. I'm at f1.8. I'm going to focus stack this shot. So I'm auto focusing slightly in front of the mushrooms, taking my shot, and the auto focus bracket is just going to move its way through the scene. 
there's quite a few different ones under this tree and all of them look great. Um, I'm basically hand holding the camera because I need it at ground level. So putting it on my tripod isn't really gonna help me here. I'm shooting F 1.8 because I wanna get a nice shallow depth of field uh, with the mushrooms against the background. If I keep the background um, sharp, all of these trees will just make for a really cluttered image. But because it's f1.8, very little of the mushroom is going to be in focus. So I'm going to focus stack the mushroom, but allowing me still to keep that background nice and blurred. I really like this pair here, sort of grown out of the same stem, but the two big caps. Um, and by getting a low angle, you can kind of see up into those fins, those gills. I'm going to turn my focus bracketing on. I've got it set to 60 shots, which should be more than enough. Choosing a focus point close to the camera, f1.8, a 50th of a second, and then I'm just letting the camera go through those shots. Piecing these focus stacks together actually isn't that difficult. So let's head over to Lightroom and Photoshop now and I'll show you how it's done. So I've imported my photos into Lightroom and as we can see there are quite a lot of them. Uh, I have just sort of highlighted um, these ones and we can see that my focus point stacks uh, begins here on this uh, bit of uh, fir cone or pine cone and then as we move through that focus point moves across these mushrooms and further into the frame. It actually keeps on going because I took enough photos that it basically gets towards the back. This uh, bit of mushroom in the background is in focus, as are these mosses and this long twig, and eventually it will go further on almost towards the background. But I don't want all of this background stuff in focus. I don't want this one in focus. I want this just to be visible as uh, essentially bokeh. So although I've taken all of these images, I'm not going to use all of them for my stack. I really want to maintain that shallow depth of field look on the mushroom itself. So that is why I have already highlighted this image as my end point. Uh, it is slightly after the mushroom and it's giving a nice sort of strip of focus here. And then that will go all the way through. Uh, to this one here. So I'm highlighting those. That's still 36 photos, which is uh, quite a nice amount for a stack. Um, so the way I begin my focus stacks generally is exporting them from Lightroom as DNG files without any edits. So then in Helicon Focus, which is where I do almost all of my focus stacking for macro photography, I can open up that folder and I can see all of those images here. So I'll just control A, select them all and press open. So let's line them all up here in our source images uh, viewer. Uh, I always, almost always use method B for my rendering method. And to be honest, I don't really know the difference between A, B and C, but B usually always does the best job. And I'll just click render. And here we go then, it's done the stack. And if we zoom in, we can see that the mushrooms look really nice and sharp. We've got loads of detail on the stalks. And also we've got plenty of the actual uh, ground in focus as well, which I really like because it really puts them in context of where they are. They're sitting in all of this uh, sort of uh, leaf litter and pine cones and things. Um, and I really like that we've just got this uh, mushroom here um, falling out of focus in the background. But I'm just going to zoom in and check some of the details because I actually think what I might do is blend in a little bit more of the image of the left into the image of the right. It's a little bit too uh, visible. Um, but maybe I could find a different one. In the retouching tab, I can just go through and maybe Maybe this one is uh, is a better option for me. We can still tell that this is the shape of a mushroom in the background, but I don't think it pulls focus from the scene in quite the way that this one does. So as this one is selected in the retouching tab, I can literally just paint over the top and replace the f uh, what's going to be visible in the final image. And I think that is about right. So I'll just click saving and I'll just press save. And then I can just re-import that image back into Lightroom. And I really do like that the job that Helicon Focus has done here. It's beautifully done. We've got no errors. I love how sharp everything looks. I love that background blur that we've got that really allows our main mushrooms to stand out. 
but there's a few things I want to do just to help make this photo look a little bit nicer. It's a little bit dark, so I'm going to bring up that exposure. Also going to bring up the shadows, maybe a little bit less. I'm going to adjust my temperature. I'm actually going to slightly cool it off just by a little bit, minus two. Maybe bring that tint up ever so slightly. And then down in the HSL tab, I'm going to grab in the hues, I'm going to grab my yellow and just slightly drag that over to the left just to warm those yellows up a little bit. If you go too far, everything goes very pink. So it's about subtle touches here. A little bit there and a little bit with the orange as well. And if I just turn that off, it might be difficult to tell, but it's added a real nice warmth there. But I'm also going to drag the green in the other direction. And that's just going to stop those greens from blending in too much with the yellows. Instead, it's making them a lot more uh, vivid emerald green. And I really like how those tones stand out from the oranges in the scene. Maybe in the luminance tab, I can stand to bring the oranges up a little bit because as I do, you can see how much it's uh, lightening up the underside of these mushrooms. And I really like that. But I don't think I'm going to do anything else. I think I'm going to leave it at that um, for my HSL tab. Uh, but the last thing I'm going to do is just add in some uh, selective edits. First of all, using the brush tool. So I'm going to get a brush and I'm going to start off just by painting underneath this mushroom like this and underneath this one. Now I just want to play around by brightening this up a little bit more, increasing those shadows, because I really wanted to have the look of the sun kind of hitting the caps and almost filtering through the mushrooms. And you can see that happening already um, when uh, in this section here, when you can see uh, that it's much lighter through the mushroom, but I want to emphasize that just a little bit more. And I think maybe add, adding just a pop of clarity here and a little bit of texture is just going to help make them pop out even more. And I really, really like how that looks. I can turn that tool off and on, off and on. And you can see it's not transforming the image. It's just adding a little extra light underneath there. And I'm just going to do one more with a much smaller brush this time. And I'm going to paint a strip down here and a little bit on here. And I'm just going to increase that exposure. And while I've got that open, I'm actually just going to paint a little bit on these pine cones there, and there, dotting a little bit of extra light around. But I really don't think that this image needs very much at all. I really, really like how it looks. I love this light coming down from above. Sometimes I might emphasize that using a radial filter. I don't think it really needs it in this image. But lastly, I'm just going to go to my color grading tools. Now that's going to let me uh, put different colors in the shadows and the highlights. And I'm just going to see what it looks like adding a little bit of sort of bluey purple tones into our shadows, something like that. It's very subtle, but I really like it. And then going the other way and adding some nice warmth into those highlights. Overall, I think that is a very, very subtle change, but I do quite like it. I think I'm going to slightly back off the shadows. But overall, I think this is probably a finished image. If I look at the before, it's really nice and sharp across the board, but it is quite dark. And I think that I wanted some more separation between the uh, yellows and oranges of the mushroom and the greens in the background. With these edits, I think we've really got that. We've got lovely warm orange tones, lovely autumnal feel, and I'm really pleased with how this shot looks. But that brings me to an end of today's video. I really, really hope that you've enjoyed coming along with me on this beautiful woodland walk. I had a great time exploring the forests, taking both those landscape images of the river and the hermitage, and I really enjoyed getting some nice macro photos as well. It's a perfect autumn day of photography for me. But if you have enjoyed this video, then do please hit that like button. And of course, consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already. And I will see you next time.